Welcome to the Middleway Podcast. My name is Dr. Matthew Goodman. This podcast is about seeing the world through the lens of interconnectedness. It's about recognizing our common humanity and discovering pragmatic solutions to improve well being from the individual to the collective. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome back to the Middle Way. In this episode, I share a recent essay or blog post that I wrote on the importance of rest and recovery, but not just rest and recovery on a physical level and not just on an individual level, but bringing in these ways of being on a collective level and on a psychological and spiritual level in the collective. And really, in my mind, this is about bringing in the qualities of the divine feminine into the world and helping to balance the scales of our world, bringing in these qualities of rest and recovery and allowance, non-doing, not knowing in order to help balance our predominantly masculine energy of doing, knowing, and controlling in the world. I hope you enjoy this essay, this episode, and I hope everyone is doing well. The world's exhausted. Ask yourself how you've been feeling over the past couple years. I think we've all felt fatigue manifest in different ways since COVID set in. We've seen higher levels of burnout at work, for example leading to that mass exodus from our jobs at one point, and now an increasing desire to work from home, and now this phenomenon of what's called quiet quitting, where people just devote minimum effort to their work. People have been reporting more difficulties with sleep over the past couple of years with anxiety, depression, addiction. Many people report feeling hopeless and fed up about the state of our politics. We're all suffering from the effects of climate change as we experience extremes and temperature. And we're all feeling the pain of a war taking place in Ukraine and the fear that comes from that, the possibility of some sort of escalation or worldwide conflict. We have good reason to feel fatigued. And it's not just people or individuals that are exhausted and in need of some TLC. It's also our systems, our economy. At one point during the pandemic, requiring life-saving injections i.e. money, to keep it going, to keep its heart going, the heart being its people, to keep its lifeblood flowing. And now finding herself suffering from sort of the opposite, almost this symptom of inflammation or inflation or tachycardia. The system is running too hot, requiring an opposite intervention, having the economy bouncing between extremes. Any system bouncing between extremes is not one that is at ease. Nor is our political system in any sort of homeostasis. We're experiencing polarities here too, causing a sort of whiplash and nausea, and nausea, making our system more vulnerable to collapse. All of this is fatiguing. And nature itself is experiencing a similar sort of polarity, bouncing and experiencing dysregulation as it goes back and forth between increasingly more extreme heat and extreme cold. So the world too has good reason to be exhausted. We might say that this fatigue that we're experiencing 
individually and collectively is a symptom of the pandemic. But I think that's actually backwards. What I want to suggest and invite us to think about here is what if it's the opposite? What if the pandemic was actually a symptom of our collective fatigue, something that already pre-existed the pandemic? The purpose of symptoms is to highlight what's already in need of attention, what's already ailing, what's already broken. They point to problems that already exist. So what if our world was already fatigued prior to COVID? And what if it already desperately needed some rest and recovery? And what if we ignored those pleas from the world? Then what do we expect it to do in order to get what it truly needs? It has to create a symptom large enough for us to pay attention. What better way to do this, to elicit this rest, than create a pandemic? COVID literally forced us into lockdown, into rest, into retreat. It forced us into our homes. It forced us to reconnect with family and friends and to reconsider what's important and meaningful for us. It also forced supply chains and institutions and systems to shut down. These things that were running on the adrenaline of just keep doing, 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 going, going, going. And here's an opportunity to quiet everything, to put everything in suspension, to hit the pause button, to have us slow down, contemplate, reconsider, is this the way that we want to be in the world individually and collectively? Is there a different way of being? COVID is a symptom presented to us, highlighting perhaps a fatigue that already existed. So what's being called for? What is the world calling for? What is it showing us about the way that we're being now? And what is it inviting us? How is it inviting us to be in a different way? So let's just think about how our current society operates. And this is just the way that I think about it. I see our society built on these qualities of doing, controlling, and knowing. Doing, controlling, and knowing. And these qualities are important and helpful in helping societies progress and grow and evolve. So we need these to keep going. But societies, just like all systems, whether we're talking about systems on the micro level, the cells of our body, for example, or on the macro level, must have balance. And this is what the Taoist yin-yang symbol is teaching us here about harmony, about balancing opposing energies. So what counterbalance is doing, controlling, and knowing? Counterbalance to that is non-doing, allowing, and not knowing. So these qualities, these qualities here are yin, whereas doing, controlling, and knowing are yang. And a system that cannot balance these opposing qualities, that cannot harmonize yin and yang, is bound to dysregulate and is bound to develop and manifest symptoms. So one way to think about these qualities of yin and yang are as masculine and feminine energies. So the masculine energies, this is really what we're built on. This is doing, controlling, knowing. 
it's action, it's discipline, it's having all the knowledge, controlling more and more and more and more and more. The opposite of that, of course, is the feminine, not doing, allowing, qualities of intuition, acceptance, not knowing, passivity, resting, retreating. These are divine feminine qualities. And these are qualities that we don't seem to value very highly in our society. So just an important note here when talking about masculine and feminine here, not referring to gender in any way, the masculine and feminine, as I'm referring to it, have little or nothing to do with being male or female because we both contain masculinity and feminine energies inside of us, whether we are male or female. The masculine and the feminine are divine qualities or archetypes that underlie our psyche and dictate our way of being. And we have to have balance between these two, both individually and collectively, or else we manifest symptoms. So our society has been built on the masculine energies. And again, just to highlight here, because of the connotations of this, not talking about the problem with men in society. I think this is a different topic. But the masculine energies, what does this mean? For centuries, we've been on this path of expanding productivity and growth and achievement. Our mantras are more work, less play, grow, 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 always be producing, always be doing. I mean, our financial, our economic system is literally built on this narrative of continual growth and expansion. That's the myth that we follow. We value being busy. We brag about being busy and not getting sleep or not getting rest. We've been noticing the speed of life has been increasing over time. We walk faster, we do things faster, we're multitasking. We're balancing a hundred different things on our phone at one time or in our heads, different tasks. The speed of life is increasingly picking up. All of these things really narrow and preclude the opportunity to be spacious, to slow down, and importantly here, to rest, to recover, to have a reset, to not do anything, to not know these important divine feminine qualities. And of course, there's nothing wrong with doing. We have to do individually and collectively. This is not an argument for complete non-doing. This is a case for balancing doing and not doing, living in more harmony. And I think when that doesn't occur, we experience burnout and fatigue individually and collectively. So we need to bring in more of the feminine, I believe, more of the divine feminine. We need a revolution of rest. The symptoms of the world are asking, they're begging for this rest. So what does this mean, rest? What does rest mean? This revolution of rest is not just literal rest, physical rest, which yes, we do desperately need. We need more sleep and self-care and other ways of getting TLC. 
and we could probably all benefit at work from more breaks and time off and work-life balance, which arguably would lead to more productivity at the end of the day. But the revolution of rest, the revolution of the divine feminine qualities cannot just be about the physical because just fo focusing on the physical, I don't believe that we'll ever, ever get where we truly want to go. This will keep us under the illusion that just working less or doing less at work or not working at all, or just taking more time to sleep all day or watch Netflix all day, that that will solve all of our problems. And while it's true that we do need to balance these things, work and play, work and rest, it needs to be more than that. It needs to be more than the physical res revolution of rest. I think that we need a psychological or a spiritual revolution of rest as well. So what does that mean? What does that look like? A psychological revolution of rest would be bringing in the archetypal feminine into our individual and collective consciousness. So what would that look like? What would it be like to have and to value less control and value more allowance or acceptance? To have less doing and more non-doing, to have less knowing and more not knowing. Individually, this might look like being more receptive and less controlling of what's happening in our lives on a macro level and also on a micro level in this very moment. It might mean this process of just trusting more, trusting the universe. It might look like a shift in our internal attitudes towards ourself from one of judgment and self-criticism as a way to motivate ourselves to one of self-compassion and patience and allowance as a way to still motivate ourselves to be better people and to reach our highest potentials. Just a shift in attitude. It might mean opening ourselves up to ideas and beliefs that contradict the identities and the ideologies that we so firmly cling to this process of being open and receptive and breaking down the order as it exists internally for us. This is the gift of the divine feminine or the gift of chaos, breaking down order. So that's individually, but on a collective level, maybe in government, this would mean loosening the grips of control, trusting people to make their own decisions and having some balance between the two. In business and in economics, the divine feminine might soften our addiction to greed and to growth, maybe helping us find some sweet spot that can both placate our thirst for competition and success, as well as this need for cooperation and a sense of contentment for what we have. In academia, this might involve more integration between different disciplines, for example, the arts and the sciences. And in science itself, it would involve less knowing and more of an attitude of not knowing. For nations, the feminine might invite in more compromise and less imperialistic ambitions. And spiritually, the divine feminine encourages us to bring in love and acceptance and nurturing into our experience, no matter what it is that we're experiencing in each and every moment. And perhaps even before making this shift, perhaps before we're able to bring in more of the divine feminine to balance 
our collective consciousness. Maybe we simply just need to show up with love and awareness and curiosity to what currently is right now, just the way things are, both individually and collectively. I think that we're being called to rest on the physical level, the psychological level, and on the spiritual level. We're being called to balance these divine energies within us. The more we ignore this, the louder the symptoms of the world continue to grow. If it's not COVID, if it's not the pandemic, it's something else. Symptoms highlighting, begging us to pay attention to contemplate, to show up, be aware of what's out of balance within us. And through this process of showing up with curiosity and awareness and love, a spontaneous emergence of a different way of being. Thank you again for listening. Remember that you can really help the show by clicking subscribe, or by leaving a rating, a review, or sharing the episode with someone else. Thanks again, and see you back here soon.